And that was the part that got me outside my comfort zone, right? And so, so often in life, we do a whole stretch of things, and then it's that last little bit that we go, I know I could do it, but I'm not gonna do it, because I think, I know I can do it, but then we don't do it, and then we don't grow through that next part. Welcome back to this week's episode of It Takes Grit with me, Rebecca Louise, and I am here in Bozeman, Montana. Now, I've never been to Bozeman before, but it is absolutely beautiful, and there's so many of you girls also that live in Montana. Had the pleasure of meeting some of you, so thank you so much for coming out and saying hi. All right, so we are talking today about why it's important to get outside of your comfort zone. So many times we hear, get outside your comfort zone, get outside your comfort zone, but why? Because if we don't know why we're gonna do something, we're never going to do it. So I'm gonna talk you through five reasons why I think it's really important to get outside of your comfort zone. And uh, I've had the most epic couple of days here in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, as some of you know that I am training to do Mount Everest in May, April, May time, 2022. I've had a lot of questions too, like why are you doing it? What does it look like? You're training. And I am gonna be documenting, and I already am documenting everything on social media. So if you're not already following TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, make sure that you go and follow me. Uh, my story is gonna be live across all platforms. Just follow Rebecca Louise Fitness. And I'm also gonna be doing a couple of episodes about nutrition. Uh, my training and also the mindset that it takes to get to the top of the world. Um, and so one of my training things was actually to do some ice climbing. Now there are parts of Everest where you have actually got to do some ice climbing, um, some vertical uphill steeps where you've basically got ice axe, uh, you have got an ascender, you've got your crampons. Um, if you want to check out some of my equipment, go to my reels on Instagram and TikTok. You'll, you'll see a whole bunch of uh, exciting things to use there. It's crazy when you get these crampons on your feet and you're walking through the snow and you're climbing up this wall. And so I'd never done ice climbing before. And I'm like an adventure thrill seeker. I'm not gonna be jumping out of an airplane again anytime soon. I'm not interested in bungee jumping, but I do love physical activity. There's something really like amazing of accomplishment when you've got yourself out into the cold, into the into nature, and you've done something that's really pushed your body. So this week was my ice climbing training. I've already been to Ecuador, did some altitude work in the snow. Um, I've been to the Alps with my guide Kenton. Um, and this week was the week that I was gonna be doing some ice climbing. And it's really crazy how the universe works because last year I was meant to do two trips and they got canceled. This trip I was meant to go with this guy called David and he broke his foot and so we got this guy called Adam. And Adam was just amazing. In fact, I didn't even know this, but I bumped into him in Ecuador two years before. He was one of the guides there. He remembered me. Um, I don't remember who he was, but I remember the conversation that I was having in this hut with telling people like how bloody cold my feet were, right? Because it's all about staying warm and how can you keep your body warm? So he was our guide for this week. And uh, it was just incredible. And I, I can't come into this video saying that I was really fearful about ice climbing because if I was really fearful, I wouldn't be climbing Everest. But there were a few times on the ice where I was like, holy shit, like what the fuck am I doing? Like, holy shit, like I'm on a wall. I know I've got a rope on me, but it's still like a little bit eerie. And the last day we did this 100 foot ice wall. Now. I was feeling pretty confident because I had like two days before and even my first go, I mean, I could not get the swing. I could not get the technique. And it reminded me like, keep thinking, like keep listening to your coach. You know, I talk about this all the time on the podcast. We all need a coach to help us in every avenue. And if I gone on the ice going, no, I know how to do this. I can figure this out, right? I don't, not listening to 25 years of experience from my incredible guide, right? So I really had to get into that student role and listen to what he was talking about how to climb. And so the first time that I did it, I tell you what, I did not look very graceful at all. And the funny thing is, is that my guide is just going up the, you know, up the wall without any ropes. He's just climbing, right? That's what he does. He has the one is to go up to the top, pop the rope in, and then abseil back down. And uh, obviously I'm going up there with a rope. I'm not going out there with nothing. Otherwise I would have killed myself over the last three days because I definitely did fall a few times, but the rope caught me. And so the first time I did it, I'm like swinging around. I'm like rebounding against the ice wall. Like, I mean, like I just look like this, like, I don't know, this like floppy thing, just like hanging out on the side of the mountain. 
And uh, he was great. He was like, no problem. Like, let's like let's think about this. Like, let's see how it can work for you. Maybe we need to adjust the rope a little, little bit longer. Maybe we need to create like, you know, a different flow. My, my feet were coming up too high. He was like, just bring your feet down a little bit. And so it's all about slight adjustments. You know, when life kind of comes along and we think that everything is going wrong, it could just be one slight thing that changes everything for us. And so I was starting to get like the hang of it. I was getting in my groove. We went on a couple of different ice walls. And then the last day we did this hundred foot one and you know I'm feeling like okay I got this I was feeling good and as you're getting higher up you're like looking down and I, I don't look down like I can kind of like look around I'm looking where my feet are going but I, I do have a little bit of a fear of heights like I'm not like I'm not just like oh this is super easy but I didn't have any fear when I fell from the rope in fact there's a great video of me I kind of fall I flop against the thing and about four seconds after I go Woo! Or something like that. Like it wasn't even like a big like thing. And I, cause I trusted the rope, but there was this one moment, second time that we went up this hundred foot wall. And this is talking about getting outside your comfort zone. And this is why it's so important is that we came up to this point and it was almost like you were going through like a really thin tun tunnel to get to the top. And I was probably about, I, I would say four minutes from the top by the time I'd done like maybe like four more different ice axes and pulled myself up, right? Because basically you hit ice axes in, you got your toes in the wall with your crampons, you lift yourself up and you go back up again. And uh, I had like this tiny bit to go and I was right at the top and I just felt kind of stuck and confined and like a little bit claustrophobic. And I was like, kind of looking down, I was like, oh my goodness, I was like, I'm almost there. Like if my arm was just a little bit longer, I could reach the top, the carabiner. And in my head I go, I'll just tell them I'm at the top. Like, I know I can get to the top, so why would I bother doing it? Like, I know I can get there, I could do it, but like, nah, I'm just gonna come back. And I was like, no, Rebecca, like, you can do this. Every single step counts. And you know, I have the tattoo on my foot that said every single step counts, and it reminds me, it's great. I didn't realize that, you know, 21 years old when I had this tattoo, how much it would really be helping me when I'm like climbing Everest. Like, you just, you never know. But I, I, I looked down at my feet. I remember there's a tattoo on my foot that said every step counts. And I just like literally edged myself up. And that was the part that got me outside my comfort zone, right? And so, so often in life, we do a whole stretch of things. And then it's that last little bit that we go, I know I could do it, but I'm not gonna do it. Cause I think, I know I can do it, but then we don't do it. And then we don't grow through that next part. Had I not done that final little top part, I wouldn't have actually got outside of my comfort zone that whole day. Now, yes, a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, you went ice climbing. And that was like, would be so outside of my comfort zone. And yes, it is a little bit scary. And there's moments where I was like, <gasps> but that right moment at the top, that was my comfort zone. So you get to think about like, what is your comfort zone? And everybody's comfort zone is, is different. You might get to an ice wall and you wanna do like four bits of it and then you come down, right? That's getting you outside of your comfort zone. But if you don't know, and if you don't actually tap into it, you're never going to grow to that next position. So I wanna tell you like five reasons like why I think it's so important to get outside of your comfort zone. And why it was so important for me to do that very very last part because really from the whole three days the biggest thing that I took away was that last part that is the part that helped me grow to the next level that's the part that's gonna help me when I'm on Everest going oh my goodness can I do this because I'm gonna remember back that moment so number one life experiences life experiences and adding things to your resume is a great way to go hey what do i want to do that's going to get me outside of my comfort zone what's going to be able to happen that i can build my life resume obviously mount everest is a big thing for me this year it is getting me outside of my comfort zone and it is a massive life experience but you want to think about like what is your life experience right something that's going to get you outside of your comfort zone is going to give you an incredible life experience that you will never forget whether it's running a 5K, whether it's going to, um, you know, traveling to somewhere that you've never traveled before. I have a lot of my BTS coaches who had never traveled until we started hosting retreats. That's a big life experience and it's out of your comfort zone. A lot of times big life experiences are outside of your comfort zone. So if you want to have something that's big and, and really like, you know, intense for that year, something that you did, you want to be able to get outside of your comfort zone. You know, I know one of my BTS coaches, like just flying over to California for her was like a big, big deal. That is a big life experience. That was also her getting outside of her comfort zone. But guess what? She had a lot of fun. So that's my number one thing. Number two is progress equals happiness. And Tony Robbins says this all the time. And I loved it because I was talking to my guide about this and 
we were chatting and I was saying, you know, he was asking me like, why do I want to climb Everest? And he, a lot of people want to climb Everest to get to the top and to get the photo and to be like, okay, I've climbed Everest, I got the photo, kind of like the, the trophy, the glory hunters. And I said to him, honestly, it's the journey of getting there. Now I've created lots of things in life, you know, we, I, I've, I've done multiple things. And once I've got to that goal, it's never really like, oh my goodness, amazing, right? But it's the progress, it's the grind, it's the grit, it's the journey, it's the experience of getting there that actually makes it just feel like, wow, right? Progress equals happiness. And it was funny because that first day when I'd gone up the first time and I would just look like I was, you know, the most ungraceful ice climber that you could imagine. Just imagine someone just hanging from a rope, flying from side to side. And then the second time we kind of like changed it up a bit. And the third time, like I got better. And he was over to the side of me, like hanging off the wall, you know, we're probably like 30 feet up. And he goes, progress equals happiness. I was like, absolutely, I've made progress and I'm feeling happy. And we were just like laughing because it's so true. You know, that first time that I did it, I could have got frustrated. I could have got angry. I could have said, oh, I can't do this. It's too difficult. But I didn't think like that. Because when you look at things differently, the things that you look at will change. I started to think, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong that's not helping me get this goal right now? How can I adjust? What do I need to learn to be able to help me do this? I didn't get frustrated. I didn't get angry. I just thought, oh, this is a puzzle that I get to solve. And that's all life is. If you're in a relationship, if you're in a job right now, if you're trying to grow a business, it's just a puzzle that you get to solve. And the progress of adding those puzzle pieces together is going to build more happiness, right? Because as I started to get my footwork right, I started to become a little bit more happy because I was like, oh my goodness, I'm finally getting this. And so progress equals happiness. So when you are trying to get outside of your comfort zone, it's not about getting to the goal in a day. It's not about getting there like immediately. It's about enjoying the journey with every single step. And those steps get you outside of your comfort zone. He was giving me a different technique to use. I was like, oh, this doesn't feel natural. Obviously, I've never ice climbed before, so it's not gonna feel natural. It's gonna feel uncomfortable. If you've never opened a business before, it's gonna feel uncomfortable, right? But that progress of just learning those techniques and being able to pull my body up and learning like how my muscles work on a new platform, right? I'm not doing just a normal home workout anymore. I'm climbing up a wall with some ice axe. You know, I was able to learn that. So remember that progress equals happiness. So if you're not progressing in your life right now, you're not getting outside your comfort zone, it's gonna have a direct reflect of, of how you are feeling. All right, number three, and I'm stealing this one from my guide, right? Getting out of your comfort zone can be fun. And there's two different types of fun that he was telling me about. Number one is the fun like in the moment, right? When you're like on the ice wall, you're feeling good, you're, you're relaxed, and you're like, this is so fun. Maybe it's for you when you turn up to your workout, you just put your brand new, you know, pair of Rebecca Louise yoga pants on, you got your new resistance bands, like that's the fun part, right? I'm ready, I feel amazing. The second thing of fun is like the actual like the workout itself, right? We know that the end of the workout, it's gonna be so worth it. The bath at the end of the workout feels so much better than if you hadn't done the workout and you just have a bath, right? It's that grind. It's that like getting towards the goal. You know, for me, it's the ice climbing. The walk, the hike to the ice climb at one day was like an hour, right? And I was in pain. I was cold. My feet were wet. My hands were cold. And like, it's like a fun kind of pain because you know what you're getting for the outcome. But that's the same when you're getting outside your comfort zone. You can't just have the first bit of fun all the time. You have to have the second part of fun to be able to grow and to be able to get what you want. But there's a way that you can think about it. And I, I remember, you know, even when I was on pain, in pain on the ice wall, I was like, this is fun. This is fun. This is fun, right? And even if you're going through like a business and you're like, you know, you're, you've got to reach out to more people. You've got to talk to people to grow it. You're like, this is uncomfortable, but it's fun, right? You start to like give your mind into like, this can be fun. This can be enjoyable. How can I make it fun? And getting outside of your comfort zone to do those things and to know that some of it is just going to be part of the journey, right? There's the fun part. There's the number one type of fun, number two type of fun. You're, you're kind of getting that like goal at the end, but it's the journey to get there. Like Everest, it's going to be painful. It's going to be so painful, right? There's going to be times where it's fun. We're sitting in a tent and we're having like a great conversation and we're eating hot food. And then there's going to be times where like it's the second kind of fun where it's like we are in our six hour just walking up the same mountain, you know, crampon by crampon, you know, putting our poles in and it's going to be painful. 
it's a different kind of fun, right? Because we're, we're working towards a bigger goal. So just remember that when you're building something you're new and you're trying to get outside of your comfort zone, there's going to be those two types of fun. All right. All right. Number four, those big things that used to really scare you become a lot smaller, right? So when I was doing the ice climbing, bringing it back to that, you know, I'm, I'm climbing up and that last little part that was really, really challenging for me. Now I've overcome that. The bit at the beginning, when I go back to do that, is going to become even easier. You know, how many times have you like put an Instagram post up and you're like, oh my goodness, like that was the scariest thing I've ever had to do. Oh my goodness, like I didn't even like, it was, it was terrifying. And then all of a sudden your coach is like, hey, to build your business, now you got to get on Instagram stories and like speak. And you're just like, oh my goodness, no, like I do not want to do this. This sounds terrible, right? So, but you do it. And then that very first post that you did seems really easy right? Maybe it's becoming a workout, right? You're like, oh my goodness, Rebecca Louise is asking me to hold a plank, right, for, for 60 seconds. And you're just like, oh my goodness, like how am I going to do it? Then the next time I'm like, hey guys, what we're going to do is we're going to do a hold a side plank for 60 seconds. And you're like, no, I, my body can't do this. And you do it and you go back to that normal plank and you're like, man, I can do this for two minutes right? So when you get outside your comfort zone, it makes those things that you did previously seem so much easier, right? And then you just grace through life, like things that used to be really challenging and now easier. So how would you feel about getting outside your comfort zone to make the things that you're already doing seem a lot more streamlined and easier? Right? For example, you know, some of my BTS coaches who flew over the very first time to our retreat, they came with their partner. They came with somebody, right? Then the next time they're like, I don't even need them to come. I want to go by myself. I want to have a girl's trip by myself because it became easier. You got to get outside your comfort zone in the very first part so that those things that were more challenging at the beginning become a lot easier, right? And then number five, like where is your trajectory? It's so funny. I was able to meet one of, you know, amazing community this morning in Bozeman, Montana and, uh, you know, just talking about people's potential, now, everybody has potential. And, you know, my life changed last year where I heard this word trajectory because everybody, by the way, has potential. How many times have you, you know, you've said to somebody, oh my goodness, this girl, she's got so much potential. She's going to be amazing, this business. Oh my goodness, this guy, he's, he's going to be amazing. Like, I love him. And like, he's got so much potential, right? It's all about potential. Until you get outside of your comfort zone and you start doing the things that you know that you get to do to be where you want to be, that is where your potential starts to become your trajectory. So your trajectory is where you're actually going. Everybody has potential. Everybody on this planet has potential. It's just if they choose to execute that potential. But instead of looking at your potential, look at your trajectory. What are you doing right now that's getting you outside of your comfort zone? Because that is what's going to help you with your trajectory. If you want to stay inside of your comfort zone, this is why it's so important to get outside of your comfort zone, because you're going to be on a trajectory. You're not going to be on potential. And wouldn't you much prefer to have like this amazing life, this trajectory that you're already on rather than sitting there going, you know what? I know I can do this. I'm not. I know I've got potential to do it, but I'm not. And the only difference between potential and trajectory is those people getting outside of their comfort zone and actually doing it which is why getting outside your comfort zone, I'm gonna bring it back to that, is so, so important because it is the difference between someone who has potential and someone who is on a trajectory to get where they wanna go. So think about that today when you're like, hey, am I thinking about do I have potential or am I actually on a trajectory? If you're getting outside of your comfort zone, I'm telling you, you're on a trajectory to where you wanna go. You're not sitting there in potential. And if you're sitting there in potential right now, what's the one thing that you get to do right now that's going to bring you out of your comfort zone and get that trajectory to start on going? So I hope that these five tips helped you. You know, my training trip here has been unbelievable. I'm going to be documenting my journey as I go through Everest. Um, I'm so excited. I leave around, you know, mid, mid April, end of April um, and going into May. It, it's about a, you know, four to six week trip door to door. I've got an incredible guide. I've got a video coming up with me. Um, 
It's not on a big group. It's going to be a very like personalized boutique experience. So I'm going to get to really share with you firsthand what's going on. Um, and I appreciate all your love and support. I know lots of you guys just found out that I got my green card as well. I'll be doing another podcast episode on immigration and what that looked like and the grit and determination uh, to get there because that is a whole other episode that we get to tap into as well. But again, thank you so much for, for watching and for listening. And if you feel like there's somebody in your life right now that you're like, hey, I know that they just if they just tapped into getting outside their comfort zone a little bit more and they understood why, their whole life would change. You could be that hero in someone's life today just by sharing it. Uh, so again, thank you so much, everybody. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you on next week's episode. Bye, guys.